lived in China for three and a half years and I have had two other apartments. In the past, I've given you a tour of my apartments and I'd like to give you a tour of this one now. The first apartment I had was a kind of a loft studio. It was very, very cool, very nice, kind of a blue collar neighborhood in Shaolin. My second apartment was in a high rise on the top floor, but a very small little studio apartment. That was when I lived in Shichi, but now I live on a college campus. There's maybe five or six teachers that live here on the campus. The rest of them all live off campus. It's not the nicest place to live in the world. It's not the worst. I've lived in much, much worse types of places. So they're good and bad things about this apartment. Because it's the end of the term, many of the students have already kind of gone home. They're still about half of them still lingering around finishing up their testing. Twice per day, uh, they blast this music and the news and this talk radio. It's only for about an hour, but it's very loud. They do it at lunchtime and then they do it again around six or seven o'clock. Oh, and then they do it again at nine o'clock sometimes when class is in session. There's always a ton of parking available. These are the two, one, two of the oldest buildings on the campus. Um, this one here, this one's mine. And if I come this way, by the way, this is one of the classroom buildings where I work. So I literally just walk across the parking lot and then this is my apartment here. And the building doesn't look like much from the outside. It's got a lot of strange anomalies and it's really old, but on the inside it ain't too bad. I'll take you in there here in a second. And throughout the campus, you got nice like little parks like this. When the students aren't here, this whole area is mine. There's nobody else here. It's literally just me and campus security. These are some of the dorm rooms for some of the kids. But as you can see, these buildings you look at, you know, they're not much from the outside. They're, all the utilities, the wiring, the internet, the air conditioning, everything is external. Nothing is internal. So they have all this conduit and wires going everywhere. It's kind of a mess. <laughs> At the end is the sports fields, which at night, most of the kids come out and they run and walk and hang out here. And uh, you know, they're basketball. And then these are the boys' dorms here. And the girls' dorms are over here. So this is kind of like the center of the area. And again, when the kids aren't here, this whole area I have to myself. So this running track is basically my personal running track when school is not in session. On the back side of the property is all of this. The build quality, I mean, these are pretty sturdy, you know, buildings. Pretty, you know, thief proof as well. Dong Guan, of course, is susceptible to typhoons and really bad storms. I and mean, we have beautiful greenery out, but you can see these wires. These are power cables and phone lines, communication lines, internet, and they just run through the trees itself. I guess it's okay because it's never been a problem. Just a very interesting design. And a little footnote here on the back side of the property. Uh, that over there is the girls' dorms. And then on the other side is the boys' dorms. And of course, girls and boys are not allowed to intermingle within their respective dorms. So what they do is they find this little nook right here. And at night, this is very dark. And I can't tell you how many times I have seen people having a little sexy time right here in this little nook at late at night. I get it. It's kind of like the only place on campus where you can hide and find a little privacy. There's just one trash can for the whole building. And then you head up these stairs. Now, press this button get the lights on. Now you can see there's wires. It's, it's not something, it's a very old, it's concrete. It's not for presentation at all. Now the one difference between my apartment and the other staff members is they all have, you know, like a, a front porch for laundry and stuff. Whereas mine's an actual door and 
I don't have a front porch. I just have a larger apartment. Now there's no elevator, of course, so you have to climb all the way to the seventh floor or the roof. From here you can see a very lovely nightscape. From this direction, it looks out on the rest of the college, which is on a hill. And uh, up here is where you hang your linens to dry. Off in the distance there, you have the administration building and some more dormitories for the students. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you first come in. I mean, I try to keep my apartment clean as much as possible, but I do live here, so it shows some living. There's a, a window here, but it's dark out and it doesn't have much of a view. I'll show you the view in the morning. So I'm gonna turn on some of the lights and there's like more light than I need. I mean, you got these lights here, then you got the recessed lights here, and then you got the chandelier and all of these lights, a couple bulbs are out. When you come in, I got a place for my shoes and then my shoe rack and then jackets and scarves and hats, of course. Uh, sunglasses, keys, and of course my flag. This couch is actually three parts. There's one part here, there's a part there, and then there's another part over there. <laughs> so uh, it's too big for the living area, so I just broke it up. This furniture is a mix of furniture that belongs to me and also belongs to the, uh, to the college. For example, uh, this rack here is mine. Uh, the television is the college's, this is college, college, the desk is mine, the chair is college, that little rack over there is mine, so it's a, it's just a mix and match. This is a two bedroom, there's a bedroom here and a bedroom there, I'll show you in a second. The second bedroom was meant to be an office, but I actually use it as a closet because I like my office here where I have access to the television. And the... So if I go over here, and here's the kitchen. Uh, so first time I've had an actual kitchen in China. Uh, I'm very happy about that. This light switch here is supposed to turn this on, but it doesn't work. This is the dining table, and there are four chairs, and it was meant to be out here under these lights, but I never used it, and I wanted more area to, to prep food. There's no shade for this, so it gets bright in the daytime, and of course I can open it. I love having a hood vent. Again, mixture, these are mine. This is the college's, this is mine, these are, this is mine, this is the college's. <laughs> it's just a Frankenstein kitchen, really, but I'm very happy with it. It's very common in China to see the refrigerator uh, somewhere in the living space as opposed to in the kitchen itself, especially in some of these older ones. Here, you know, I've shown this before. My mother gave this to me in 2000 when I left for the Air Force and I still have it. A man travels the world in search of what he needs and returns home to find it. So mother, after 20 years, I still have this and it follows me in every country I go to. Um, this massive, this is rice. I have two big bags of it. That was a gift from the college, as well as, you know, this thing of oil and soy sauce is also a gift from the college. Guitar was a gift from a friend of mine that I haven't been learning to play and it's terrible. And this, obviously is a MAGA hat. I am not a Donald Trump fan, but this was a gift from a student. I have my liquor cabinet with just a couple liquors. I got a rum, a scotch, and another scotch. And then this is a baijiu, a very cheap baijiu. Uh, and then of course I have my Optimus Creed, which I've done a video on, I'll link it below. And then over here, I've got my electronics stands where I charge all my batteries and my stuff. <laughs> and then this is my work area. I like sitting here and having access to TV so I can watch a movie, TV show, and work at the same time. And it's a two screen setup. But in addition, I have my old laptop down here. So what I'll do is I'll plug the HDMI and run it to the TV. So I can do YouTube, I can do streaming from the big TV. So I basically have a two screen set up here and a two screen set up here. This is a map of Feng Huang that I got when I was there in Hunan. Um, there's very few power outlets. So what I had to do is I had to use this one up here 
not quite sure what it was for, but and run it down to charge all my equipment here. And as you can see, there's some leftover hooks and stuff from artwork that used to be here, and along the edges you have some tape and things. For it looks like they were for some Christmas decorations at one point. Um, I haven't been able to get up there and clean it out yet. Here I got my books, which are a combination of my own books. These are all my lesson plans and books that have been here from previous teachers. And then the bedroom. And it's a very comfortable bedroom. It's kind of dark. Hold on, let me, again, a lot more light than you need. I got recessed lights and I got these giant lights here and a couple of bulbs out. Uh, it changes from tile to wood floor, which is okay, but my neighbor below me can hear me walking on this floor. <laughs> so I got a chair, a good closet with some, you know, drawer space. Uh, this is covering up a bad floor. As you can see, the floor is kind of getting warped. There was some mold damage here along the wall. The air conditioning, it's an old air conditioning, but it still works, but apparently it leaked at one point and there was some water damage. And, uh, you know, I don't need it replaced right now. It's not important. This TV barely works. It's so old. <laughs> uh, I can only use the DVD player, which I bought, you know, used, and I can watch a movie if I want to. Um, and of course the bed. It's a Chinese bed, meaning it's rock hard. So what I did is I put a couple pads underneath to kind of make it soft. It works for me, but it's not perfect. Now the bathroom is kind of one of the downsides of my <laughs> apartment. It's just old. It's very small too. Uh, now this toilet is brand new. When I first arrived, the toilet was broken and it uh, was leaking and it was just a horrible smell. So it actually took them a few months for them to replace it, but they replaced it and I'm very happy with it. Um, but you can see it's very tiny to get in here. This is actually mine because there was no shelving space other than these two here. So I got some extra shelving space. This shell I took off the beach in Yum Yum. This light up here, as you can see, it's kind of busted. And I asked them to replace it. And so what they did is just they replaced the bulb, but then they run this line down here to the outlet here. And there's no switch. So if I want it off, I have to unplug it. If I want it on, I plug it back in. <laughs> Shabba -dua. As you can see here, this needs to be replaced. This is just dirty and rusty, so I don't put the toilet paper in there. I just have to keep it next to it. I'll replace this myself soon. Now remember, the shower, I, you know, it's kind of a utility shower as well. So I have, you know, my floor cleaning kits and, you know, my mop and stuff like that. I just mop the floors, so that's why it's drying in here right now. But this is a perfect example of a Frankenstein shower. So as you can see, I've got maybe four different types of tile as they've broken that up and replaced some of the pipe and turn up pipes obviously and then you have the water heater here and then they run the electric right here Chava door. the secondary bedroom i use as kind of my closet it's meant to be an office or an actual bedroom in fact this this futon here actually folds into a bed and so if i have a guest they can sleep here but i just use it as my closet honestly so you know laundry uh this map i gotta put back up on the wall i like maps so this is a uh, zhong jia jie and then over here is uh joshua tree national park in california this was here when i moved in and it's cool just to kind of stare at it for a couple of minutes and try to memorize it it's been very helpful i've learned a lot from this and of course this is my basically my closet and the never ending saga of matching socks and then i have a gift from my students just a little, few tastes from home it's my own unit this is my all access pass when i hosted the betty fair oscar party back in 2011 in hollywood of course i have some of my lapel pins from my hotels and some military stuff last time i was in america i went to mike's ocean night at angel stadium the printer does not work it belongs to the college so it just stays here this is a dish and disinfectant it's never worked but it belongs to the college so i keep it another 
AC, so there's two AC units, one in the main bedroom and one in here. And as you can see, it just kind of runs that way. Have a door. And then the door out to the patio is this giant, this steel door. This is my utility balcony. So uh, there are no dryers, so you hang dry all your clothes. And then this washing machine is old, but it works and it's clean. I know my colleague got a new washing machine this year. They asked me if I wanted one. I said, eh, it doesn't need it. It works just fine and it's clean and it does a good job. And then on this side, this is a satellite dish that I'm sure at one point worked for the teacher who lived here. And I've got two AC condensers that are kind of a mess of wires. <laughs> You know, they drip all over the place. And of course, the best thing about this apartment is that it's free. It's part of my compensation package. So because it's free, I pay absolutely no money out of pocket to stay here. It's very hard to complain about anything. In fact, I'm quite happy here. So if I were to go out to get another apartment similar to this in this neighborhood, it's not an expensive neighborhood. I mean, the, the campus is kind of this green park-like oasis up on a hill surrounded by factories. But if I wanted to find a similar apartment to bedroom one bath of this size in a in an older building just like this, it would cost maybe 1200 to 1500 RMB per month, uh, plus of course deposits. And then you do all your utilities as well. I mean, based on what I've been paying for utilities in the past, that's for electricity and water and sewer and internet and everything, all of that combined, probably around 500 a month. So again, all of that is taken care of by the college and I don't see a single bill for staying here. The landlady actually lives in this building and you know, she takes care of everything if I ever have a problem. She's Johnny on the spot with it. The maintenance guys are great. They're, they're very courteous. When class is not in session, it's a very quiet place. I, out my window, there's no truck traffic. There's no motorcycle taxis honking. There's no buses. There's no street vendors. It's just the campus itself. So when the kids are gone, I wake up in the morning to the sounds of silence. You have no idea how crazy that is. I mean, even if you live in a big, expensive, high-rise apartment on the top floor, you're still gonna come across a ton of noise. It's just part of living here. So I think the best thing about living here is the fact that at night, it is very quiet and peaceful, and I wake up in the morning to the sound of birds in the trees.